The C2C and sweep rolls both start from the same setup position. In real scenarios, you need to move to this setup position while you're upside down. But for the sake of practice, we're going to assume the setup position before flipping. The setup position involves having your paddle alongside your kayak with the front blade flat to the water surface, power face up. Now tuck your head and body forward and turn your upper body towards your paddle. This is your setup position. The side that you set up on is determined by your control hand, which is the hand that stays fixed to the paddle. You want to set up so that your control hand is up front, which means that if you're right-handed, you'll set up on the left side of your kayak. Once you're upside down, you'll accentuate the setup position. The goal is to get your head and body as close to the surface and as far out to the side as possible. Your forearms should also press against the side of your kayak and your hands should be holding your paddle in the air. The idea is that the further out to the side you can get your body, the more you'll be able to hip snap your kayak upright. If you stay tucked forward under your kayak, you won't be able to hip snap the boat nearly as effectively. This is definitely the most awkward part of the roll. The catch refers to the part of the roll where you grab water with your paddle blade for support so that you can hip snap your kayak upright. This is also where the C to C and sweep rolls start to work differently. The catch phase for the C2C roll involves swinging the front paddle blade out to 90 degrees from your kayak with your control hand arm, keeping the blade as close to the surface as possible. The other forearm acts as a pivot against the side of your kayak and keeps the other blade over the bottom of your upside down boat. Swinging your blade out to 90 degrees is another test of your flexibility, and in order to do it and keep your shoulders safe, you need to apply the second golden rule, which means maintaining a power position. This simply means that when you swing your control arm out to 90 degrees, your upper body needs to rotate to keep your hands in front of you. One of the best ways to ensure you're doing this is by watching your active blade through the water. Turning your head to follow your blade will naturally rotate your upper body as well. With your paddle blade out at 90 degrees and on top of or as close as possible to the surface of the water, you'll simply pull downwards on your paddle and catch the water. When you feel the catch, it's time to hip snap your kayak upright. The catch phase for the sweep roll is very similar. The difference is that you'll start applying downward pressure as you sweep your blade out to 90 degrees. Let's take a closer look at what's happening during the catch phase of the sweep roll. The setup for the sweep roll is of course the same, but things change as you start swinging your paddle out to 90 degrees. Since you want support from your paddle as you do this, you're going to swing your paddle blade out in a wider arc than you did for the C2C roll. This means that your forearm won't stay against your kayak as a pivot. Instead, that arm should be kept bent, close to your body, and relatively passive while your control hand sweeps the wide arc out to the side of your kayak. Keeping your paddle near the surface is your biggest challenge, and the only way to do this is by having a climbing angle on it. And if you remember from the sculling section, a climbing angle means that the leading edge of your blade is higher, which allows the paddle to climb to the surface. You won't need that much climbing angle on your paddle because you're not going to be putting that much downward pressure on it. As with the C2C roll, while swinging your blade out to 90 degrees, you need to maintain your power position at all times. In fact, your arm should stay in a relatively fixed position while your torso rotation drives the sweeping motion of your paddle. Once again, watching your active blade is one of the best ways to ensure that you're doing this. Another idea that's important to understand is that your paddle will offer very little support when it's at the bow of your kayak, but you'll get a growing amount of support as it sweeps its way out to 90 degrees, which is its point of maximum leverage. Since your hip snap relies on this support, it should make sense that your hip snap will get more aggressive as your paddle sweeps further out to the side of the kayak. The recovery refers to how your body ends up in its final position on top of your kayak. If you set up well, used a solid hip snap and maintained your power position throughout, then the recovery will be relatively straightforward. There's some debate about the recovery path your body should take after the catch and the hip snap. Most people like to swing their body backward a little bit to lower their center of gravity when they come up, although there are some who prefer to come up on the front of their kayak. There's no right or wrong here. Just use whichever is the most reliable for you. One of the most common problems during the recovery phase is an early lifting of the head. As you already know from the hip snap and bracing segments, this causes you to pull up on your top knee and yank your kayak back upside down. 
your head should be the last part of your body to return to its position over the kayak. One of the best ways to ensure your head stays down is to watch your active blade throughout the whole roll. Not only does this help keep your head down during the recovery phase, but as we already looked at, it helps promote torso rotation during the catch phase of the roll as well. If all goes well during the recovery stage of your roll, you should finish over top of your kayak with a slight backward lean, your head and torso turn to face your active blade. On a final note, another good habit to get into is to finish your roll with your wrist cocked back slightly. That way when you bring your body forward again, you can skull and brace your way there. With practice, you can actually use this final sculling motion to finish a weak or incomplete roll.